All right, we are back uh, for another episode tonight. Let's pick up where we left off. It is the next morning. The next morning, um, you uh, are still, all of the companions are still uh, in your little guest quarters. Um, Kina uh, leads a somewhat disheveled... <laughs> Thaddeus, uh, from their um, marriage clamshell bed, uh, off to uh, back to the city. And uh, they swim back to the city together. <laughs> and uh, for the first time, Thaddeus realizes that he has ability, if he just thinks about it, to change part of his body. Why would I want to do that? I'm perfect. <laughs> okay. Can he choose what part of his body he changes? His oh, feet. Sorry. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, as you swim back to uh, the city, uh, Kina is, uh, receives a messenger uh, at the edge of the city who's clearly been waiting for you guys to come back. And this messenger uh, tells her that uh, when you are ready, uh, Nereo is uh, waiting to discuss uh, what you are going to do now about uh, the adventuring party. Uh, so uh, Kina begins leading you back to the uh, to to meet Nereo. As you go back into the same great hall, clearly it's Nereo's throne room. As you go back into the same great hall. Um, Nereo is waiting for you and uh, with a big smile on his face and uh, he's quite happy with the outcome of everything to do with this uh, and uh, just as he's going to speak to you all of a sudden you hear this it sounds like this strange echoey horn going off through the water <laughs> Dear Lord. And all of a sudden, this messenger bolts in swimming and uh, comes up to Nereo and whispers to him. And uh, he looks over at the messenger and uh, uh, suddenly begins shouting orders as you see many of his elite guards swimming around too. And it looks like... Uh, uh, they're forming up and they're all swimming out the other end of the hall and Kina grabs you by the arm and says, come, we must help him. Come, come, we must help him. And uh, as she is pulling you along, she looks back and she says, she says, crab wreck has come. What is crab wreck? You don't know what crab wreck is. That's why I'm asking. At the same time, uh, all of the companions hear the same horn echoing through there, and they see a lot of activity. Uh, and are we uh, still in our in our in your guest quarters? What okay. do you wish to do? Well, we heard the. Do we hear the horn? You hear this this conch shells horn we, sound. I would come out and try to yeah. investigate what's going on. Check it out. Yep, I as, agree. As you do that. One of the uh, mermen who uh, was uh, talking to uh, Raven the night before comes by, looks at you and says, you must come. You must help. Crabrek has come. And Stanley uh, Crabrek? Uh, as, uh, as he gestures to you, he then swims off, and you see that it is back down that main thoroughfare that you've come from, and... You see some type of strange, black, dark, hulking shadow just beyond the city where what is the other side of the of the city that's in this crevice where there's the other side that must open up. Or, or, one, of the, the or one of the people near me, the tenders, can I, can I ask them a question? They are all flitting by you pretty fast. Do you want it, to try and is, stop one? Is that the thing you were avoiding on our way here? And uh, they stop. It's a mermaid. She stops and she says, I do not know what know what it was you were avoiding, but no, 
They would Big not have been black shape in the water. And then she just quickly says, "Come, come, okay. Crabrek is here." I guess we, we we've been called to arms. Called to arms, I guess. Absolutely. Well, and Let's go. we're definitely here to help our comrades. Yeah. All right. So you guys can all kind of do this whole boop. <laughs> boop, boop thing through the water on the sand like you're like, uh, Vine. walking all of the all of the merfolk seem to be swimming past you at a pretty quick rate you'll see and you notice that all of them are armed hmm. all of them have got tridents and things like that um as you get to the southern edge of the city uh at what is a giant ruined gate that's all crumbled down. Uh, you join Thaddeus and Kina there and the rail. And this is what? Uh, let me get the right scene. This is what you see. Oh. Ooh. That is. So, uh, no for way the we folks can at put home, that. I can't. What they see, you can't really see yeah. much of it on this <laughs> no, scene. No, not even. I wish I could tip that up a little bit. Just if you tip it up. Just tip it up. up. I yeah. can't tip it up. The way, no, no, Dave it'll just mess it up. It's it locked in place. Okay. It's a really, <coughs> really, really big crab. It is a crab that is easily... 60, 70 feet in height, a giant monstrous gargantuan crab with huge armored pinchers. And it looks like it must be some type of hermit crab that has taken a shipwreck for its shell. So hermit crabs will often take different things and they will fit themselves into them. And that whatever that thing is becomes their shell. In this case, this giant hermit crab has taken some shipwrecked derelict from the bottom of the ocean that had a big hole in the bottom of the hull and has fit itself into it and is using this shipwreck as its as the protection over the top of its back so is this why it's called crab wreck and apparently that is why it is called crab wreck it wouldn't make mm. sense well mm. and uh then uh <laughs> as you see as you are watching uh it's wreaking havoc uh and there are merfolk swimming towards it throwing tridents at it and then trying to get out of the way um it is time for you to roll initiative so the first one to to react of you as you see crab wreck battling all of the merfolk around you is lavinia and what would you like to do I would like to try message and see if the crab <laughs> understands me. Probably doesn't. So Greg had levitate. Levitate, I mess. know. She's got message. <laughs> I was Today. totally thinking the same thing. <laughs> I would levitate that crab if I could. All right. So you're using message on the crab? Actually, no, I'm not. The crab I, does not speak any language you speak, I'm, so it yeah, has no. no I'm not. I'm not going to use message. <coughs> but I am not really aware of how some of my spells will work underwater, so I guess I can just try and see. Right. I would like to cast magic missile. You want to cast a magic missile at at uh, the crab? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you cast Magic Missile. I'm going to move this guy down here where I can get at him. He can't dodge it, obviously. Uh, so uh, you fire your missiles. Uh, you're not moving, so you get to do 3d4s <laughs> plus one point of force. Yeah. Go ahead. You are out of camera when Four. you do that. Four. Lavinia, you're way out of camera. I can't even see you. And is this better? Much better. Thank you. Okay. Four. Four plus. Plus two. Plus two plus. One. Plus one. Seven. Seven plus one point of force damage that you get to always add. So you do eight points of damage to the big crab. 
Nice. That makes it three fifty. See, I'm tired tonight. Math is hard because of this. Well, how many points does he start with? Wow. Jeez, wow. <laughs> Let me put it this You're way. You're trying to take advantage of him. Let me put it this way. It's more than 50 points. So we're just chipping away. A lot more. Okay. Okay. Um, so that is Lavinia's turn. And it becomes the uh, very next person to react is Thaddeus, who has been on the scene and had a little bit of time to assess things. Mm -hmm. Put the gloves on. You put the gloves on. I put the gloves on. Um, and with my new tail, I'm swimming up to the top of his head. Ooh. Okay. Mm. Um, and I'm going to stab my cane rapier into his skull, into his Excellent brain. Excellent idea. Good idea. Uh, roll to hit. Very inspirational. Mm -hmm. And I've got plus four to strike. Uh -huh. 16 plus 4 is 20. Misses. You find that oh. if you thrust down with the cane rapier, you realize that he is a giant armored crab. He's got a thick who's skull. He's got <laughs> this thick armor encasing his entire body that is possibly inches thick. And nothing that you have uh, of your weapons will penetrate it because he's got an armor class of 43. Okay. Armor class of 43? Literally nothing we have will do I anything. Have, I have an idea, though. So Thaddeus discovers that he is so thickly armored that he cannot uh, even penetrate it. And it becomes... He's got a thick skull, ladies and gentlemen. It becomes Josephine's turn. I... Okay. What I would do if we were above water is... Boom! Mabel right into his fat underbelly because crabs have a soft underbelly... But does Mabel work underwater? Unfortunately, no. Yeah, I know. Wet, um, wet powder. Yeah. Glenn, do you want? Are you good to drive for a little while? Rod needs a break. Oh, Rod. sorry. I'm. Uh, there we go. Here, Glenn. Thank you. Go for it. Yeah, I was getting distracted. I was. I, thoughts are going on in my head. Like would would would, would my problem, zephyr sorry. vial make me swim very fast? Yes, it okay. would make you swim faster. I would say that zephyr vial would make you give you the same speed as that you have on land. Okay, um, let's do a zephyr vial. Okay. Uh, so after inhaling the vapor held in the zephyr vials, Josephine moves like the wind for one minute until the spell ends. Her movement doesn't provoke opportunity attacks. So that's ten Once, rounds. Once before the effect ends, Josephine has advantage of one uh, advantage on one weapon attack roll on one turn. The attack deals an extra 1d8 force damage on a hit. Hit or miss, Joe's walking speed increases by 25 feet until the end of that turn. So what I would like to do is chug down that Zephyr vial. Swim up to the underbelly and stab my boot knife into it. Okay. Uh, as you swim up to the underbelly, I'm going to let you roll an investigation check. Roll investigation. Okay. D20. Yeah. No, there was just another dice in my cup. I rolled a 10. 10. Uh, you see that there are some actual joints where especially in the underbelly all of the legs come out and there are different ridges in different spots that it might be possible for you to get a boot knife through so roll to attack chinks in the armor 
Correct. I rolled an 18. You rolled 18. Mm -hmm. Your boot knife works. Roll nice. for damage. Uh, damage would be plus four. Okay, damage. Oh, 1d4. Boo. How boring. Oh. I rolled a two. All right, so you do two points of damage, but it's a boot knife. Mm -hmm. And that's a boot knife from your world. Mm-hmm. Which means that it's a bright steel boot knife. It sure is. Well, bright iron. I yep. the term we use. Bright iron boot knife. Which means that you also get another four points of fire damage. Cool. So six points of damage for swimming, chugging my vial and swimming six up there and finding the chink in the armor. Okay. And I can report back. Y'all, there's chinks in the armor underneath in the underbelly. So, Josephine is now under the underbelly, Thaddeus is on the top, and it becomes Raven's turn. Okay, so Raven will cast a spell. Here's my spell token. I will use um, my spell, and I'm going to cast... <laughs> hey! I'm an animal! Oh, you gotta, hey, you you gotta, you gotta put your camera, they put them on the camera, yeah. Here we go, summon animal. Oh, you it's can... not showing up. Oh, okay. there, there, there it goes up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. It's hilarious. Okay, so I'm an animal. Those are awesome gloves. Yeah. I can't wear both because then I can't work the little device. But okay. uh, anyway, so now I've summoned an animal and I'm going to summon an electric eel. Nice. An electric eel. Yes. All right. Well, today the electric eel will be played by our trusty... <laughs> Velociraptor. 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 Okay. He's going to be the electric eel because I'm not prepared. I will be more prepared when I am no longer you under the water. pick a snake. Any kind of snake would look like it. Yeah. Actually, yeah, but. Uh, I can't yeah. get to it right okay. now. Yeah, just, cool. just okay. the Velociraptor right, works. That's fine. What I want to do is actually, <laughs> Raven and I are going to get together and we're going to discuss all of his summoned animals yeah. so that I have a little tray. And I can just pick out the appropriate one for the ones that. But then, how pick. can he surprise you well, with a, like a, a, a surprise animal? Yeah, but it. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. it would be one of to, like the ten that are in there. He has. But to I keep love you the fact the that Velociraptor can play all of them. He's a yeah, he's, multifaceted he's a, yeah, Velociraptor. Flexible creature. Yeah, very flexible. Okay, so, so I can um I can what cast. What does electric heal do? Electric Eel is going to um, <laughs> swim up. He can swim 30 feet. So I assume that's close enough then because I could yep. cast 30 he feet. He can swim up to him. Um, <clears throat> whereabouts do you want him to go? I want him to go right up to one of his eyeballs. Oh. Okay. Well, he's got these two stalks sticking out from the front. Big stalks. I mean, they're he's so big that they're the size of like oak trunks. Oak trunks. So... Uh, I'm going to get my eel to use Stunning Shock, which a creature is um, critically hit by the electric eel's tail must attempt a DC 17 Fortitude save. Okay. And if it's successful, it's a stunned one. If it's a failure, it's a stunned two. Right. So you you have to do a uh, DC 17 Fortitude save. Right. His fortitude is a plus 32, so he has no problem whatsoever oh. withstanding that kind of a stun. Dang. Okay, that's the end of my turn. May I ask a quick question, please? Yes. Since we had a full night's sleep, could we have our tokens back, please? Oh, you know what? That's a good thing. Here. Yes, you mm, can. Yeah. You get all your tokens back. I you can keep, keep the keep, level two. Keep the one. Level one for me, because I wasn't able to pay you for the last spell, because I didn't realize I didn't have... Magic Missile? Yeah. I'll just leave that one on the floor where it is. <laughs> oh, wrong thing. There you go. There. Thank you. There's all your tokens. Okay. Good. Could I have my token? Uh, yeah, yeah, over to you. Oh, I see. And it becomes Percy's turn. Percy has a crazy idea. Percy Ooh, has an oh, idea. Percy always Percy has a crazy idea. Percy is going idea. to swim for the ship. Percy swims for the ship. And I want to get inside the ship and see if I can attack the soft part of the hermit crab that goes into its shell or protective device. Yes. 
Mm. So Percy uh, has to use all three of his turns to swim to swim into the ship. Okay. He makes it onto the deck and into what have, would have been the door to the captain's cabin. Okay. And uh, that's as far as you're able to go. Okay. When you open that and you are looking down, sure enough, most of the rest of the inside of the ship has been all gutted. And here you see just a whole big mass of crab flesh okay. without armor. Just, there's the brain. Smart. And that as was a my, result of that. That's my big idea. Oh, you can get a hero coin. I don't have a money hero coin. Where, where's yeah. the actual main stash of them gone to? Mm-hmm. Did you hand them all up? All right. You get an imaginary hero coin and try to find my stuff. That's uh. That's mine. That's, that's, oh. that's oh. what the problem is. Oh, don't take yours. <laughs> oh, you got to take Raven's to give to him. Nope, nope. Okay, so you have two hero coins. Right? Yay, okay. I, Good. I will take two that I have here. Give him one, yeah. That's good. Should I give two or one? Just one. Okay. And it is the end of his turn, and it becomes, it becomes Giant Crab's turn. Now, Giant Crab, all of a sudden is focused on a powerful figure that comes swimming to the forefront in front of everybody else, and it is Nereo. And you see this glow around Nereo of his own electric stuff zapping mm. out into the water as he is charging and poking at the crab with his trident. And the crab is completely focused on the rail and ignoring everybody else uh and it becomes lavinia's turn and then after that thaddeus he'll be yours how far away from him am i uh you are standing where you're standing there so i'm going to say you're 60 uh feet away okay i am oh wait I didn't move myself. I'm under the. That's right. I actually, move the other and, guys too. Uh, Rob is <laughs> I, over the crab. No, over I'm going to have you, since you're moving and closer to the crab, the crab. I yeah. am going to move the crab. Since you're closer to the crab, I'm going to move the crab. If I can find my. Once upon a time, I had a cursor. Hold on, I've got to find it. There we go. Whoa. Look at him! Look at him! Look at him! In the eyeball. Yep, I'm, yeah, I'm on deck, just like this. And I'm, I'm there, but underneath. Okay. All right. I want what I want to do is find a way under the crab, so that I can take my sickle and start cutting off his legs. So you want to oh, join? Wow. You want to join Josephine? <laughs> Essentially, which okay. is so you uh, swim under him. So this, this is where I am. Yeah, you can take two turns, two actions to swim under him, Maybe and then you are close right enough now. to one of his legs. You also notice that his pinchers are not that far from you, and they are big and powerful, and they could yeah, easily but snip a person in half. If if I'm out of range of pincers, like under. Neath, there's no way pincers don't go backwards they only go forwards uh they go like this to bring food to its mouth yeah so if she's behind the pincers it's Uh not if she's under the belly yeah right here (laughs) yeah okay so you are close to one of the legs you are within swinging distance of his forward uh left leg all right i would like to use my sickle and give it a hack uh roll to hit Nice. 16. 16 plus whatever. 16 hits. Go ahead and swing your, uh, uh, like, roll for your damage. Right. Which one of those? You have to pull up your sickle. And your actions. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Hey, Simon. So it's 1d4, base damage is 1d6. 1d6 and and 1d4. Just roll 1d6 and 1d4. 1d4 is your fire damage on your sickle. 
because it's bright iron. Okay, sorry for being out of range. Am I back in range now? Yeah, it'd be a good idea for everybody to get used to if you don't have your tray in front of you, set in front of you to roll. Okay, uh, <laughs> hold two points. Ooh. So you got 1d4 and a 1d6. Uh, and and she rolled a, run, a 1 and a 1, yes. Snake eyes. All right. Uh, you also, uh, you don't get any other damage on it. You do two points of damage, but you don't do any points of damage because as the blade of your sickle hits the heavy armor that's on his legs, the massive natural plating on his leg, it skitters across it. And you see a little jagged line, but it does zero damage. Well, fully. And it becomes Thaddeus' turn, then after him, Josephine. How does Josephine then? Uh, nope, nope, oh. other way around. Okay. Um, does it make sense that I would have seen Percy um, swimming up into the ship? Unless you decide and, to and follow realized, him. Yeah, and realized, of course, that's, that makes sense to, to go in there because being a medical professional... I understand that certain creatures like hermit crabs do have a soft spot that is uh, put into their house. So, what do you wish to do? I'm going right in there as well. Okay, no. so you follow Percy <coughs> up in. It takes you <coughs> one action because you're already there next mm -hmm. to the ship. Yep. It takes you one action to swim up to where you need to be, and then... Uh, Percy is at the doorway. Uh, there is enough room because it's all broken apart for you to go through. You have two actions, and you see a big, fleshy crab back. Cane right there. Cane it's right already here. in my hand. Hold a hit. Seven. Seven. You try your first stab with your cane rapier. And the flesh is pretty spongy. There's a lot of cartilage right there. And you end up not doing damage with your first attack. In for the 18. nerve bundles. 18, it hits. With your bonus of 5, it hits. Yay. Nice. And my computer has gone off. So I'm not sure what the damage is. If you really um, It's your cane rapier. So I'm going to say it's a D8 plus a D4. D8 is seven. Well, that was a good roll. D4 is one. So, nice. You do eight points of damage. And for the first time, uh, you get a reaction from the crab from the stab, and it <laughs> bucks a little bit. And I roll, uh, well, no, you're not going to have to. You're it's mm -hmm. going to knock you to your feet because you're floating in the water. So, yeah. uh, you find that he bucks a little bit. The water sloshes around. The, the sea sloshes around you. But with my new tail, I can. I'm surprisingly yes. stable. You are <laughs> amazingly stable. Congratulations. <laughs> and it becomes uh, Josephine's turn. Then Raven. Then Percy. Well, then the crab. And then Raven, Percy, and then the crab. Go ahead, Josephine. Okay. I'm doing two-handed, a boot knife and a buckskinning knife up into those little chinks. Okay. All right. Roll the hit. Okay. So the boot knife is going to be 1d4. Oh, wait. Be a roll, d4 the, roll, and the a d4. roll the hit. They'll both be d4 and a d4. Roll the hit. I rolled a three on the first one. Okay, so the first one does not missed. penetrate into the chink. And I rolled a ten on the second. Second one does not penetrate yeah, into the chink. Yeah, okay. I'm just, like, flailing wildly in the ocean. Have it's another fine. action. One more action. Do I? Okay. Um, Again with the, the one of them. I'm not really good with knives. I rolled an eight. And the, it doesn't penetrate either. Yeah. The armor is just too tall. Oh, wait. I rolled the wrong dice, though. I rolled a, I rolled this one. What, what even is this one? That's a 12-sided dice. A 12. 12. Okay. So. I've never used that one before. You, you, you I rolled a 5 regardless. Okay. So, yes. 
All right, that's the end of your turns. It becomes Raven's turn. Hmm. It's a dodecky. So I observe these guys swimming into the house, I assume. Yeah, you see them swimming up to the top. Okay, well, I'm going to... I know that what I'm doing isn't doing any good with all this armor, watching my eel flail away. So I'm going to attempt to swim up with my three turns to get into that house as well. Okay, takes you all three turns and you get up there as well. Okay. All right. And uh, I will command the eel to follow us. Okay. He gets two turns. (coughs) So uh, so he follows up with you. That's one turn. Is it? Does because he... he's already up at the eye stock. He was trying okay. to zap So he eye. has no problem getting there. He still has one turn out there. Okay. So if he sees that mask, um, I would like him to attack it as well with his electric shock. Sure. Roll to hit. <laughs> uh, a natural one. <laughs> oh, dear. He didn't do very well for an, an eel. Oh, well, because dear. he's a summon creature, I'm not going to give him any negative effects for a one. I'm just going to say it didn't work. Jeez. No, not even close. Um, and it becomes uh, Percy's turn, and then the giant crab, the ancient crab. So ship, uh, I mean crab wreck. All right. Should put this so uh, let's use the bastard sword. It's big and unwieldy. And I rolled a 21. Hits. And uh, that does. Damage. Oh, why can't I see anything? Okay, hang on. Oh, 1d8 plus 2. Seven points of damage. Seven points of damage. All right. You heard him. All right. And I'll do it again. And once again, he, you you see the crab buck as it's stabbed. It's mm-hmm. not used to feeling pain. And it's very, very, very big. But these little things are giving it, hitting it in a very tender spot. Uh, that one doesn't do anything. Uh, one more time. One more time. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. n- a nine plus ten doesn't do nope. it. Nope. Not yeah. going to make it. You get the penalty. That's right. the penalty. Um, and that's my turn. Okay. Uh, becomes, uh, crab's turn and, uh, crab starts wiggling itself around a little bit because of it's got this problems with something being under its shell and, it, and bothering it. Uh, it is still battling the rail, so it doesn't try and go after any of you, but it is moving around. So that means that whoever is underneath it could get hit by it swinging its body around down there so that means that i need both josephine and lavinia to roll a reflex set (laughs) to dodge see if you can dodge its movements while it's thrashing d20 i rolled a 16. (laughs) you're okay and lavinia three Rolls a three. Lavinia ends up taking just three points of damage when one of the uh, big crab legs hits her and knocks her a little bit into the water. But there's no prone because you're in the water, so you just get bumped by it. Bump and a big bruise. That's right. And then it becomes Lavinia's turn immediately. I'd like to get out from underneath there. And um, am I able to swim up to the house? Yeah, I'll take all your actions. And you can swim up to the shipwreck. Ship. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so Lavinia swims around between the legs and up to the shipwreck to join the others. Okay, and it becomes Thank Thaddeus's you. turn. Lavinia, Thaddeus, Josephine. Does Nereo have a turn? Uh, he's fighting the crab, and, and okay. we're going to skip his turns in, in the interest of brevity, because otherwise I could go through, you know, forty <laughs> mermaids. Yeah. Hey, okay, I'm we're going to cover your part of the. Battle. Um, since I've got my cane rapier in my hand, I'm going to swing it like a baseball bat. Okay. At the... Okay. 
18 hits. And one and one. That was a good look, look in the camera. Look in the camera. So, oh, wait, as you, on. two damage on that one. As you uh, hit him with that, with the oh, yeah. bludgeoning attack, it's all kind of spongy and it goes bloop, and you do two puny points of damage. Two puny points. <clears throat> Roll to hit again. Seven. Seven. Uh, and you get an extra He's five. You miss on the second. Third try? Third, Third try is the charm? I hope so. <laughs> Six. Miss. Oh, I'm back. All right, it's Josephine's turn, then Raven, then Percy. Okay. Um... Oh, Lavinia, did I miss you? Okay, we'll... We'll stick Lavinia in here because that's what happened. I miss. I well, jumped to that. No, no. Go ahead, Lavinia. I'd like to use bone spray. Bone spray. All right. So you no, you used your turn to, swim, to up swim up there. there. Okay. But oh when it's, yes. But when yes, it's my turn right. again, I'll you'll use. do it. Okay. So it is Josephine's turn. Okay. I, I, I okay. Thought that was right. So I'm the only one still stuck underneath here, and I'm still f- jabbing at the chinks in the armor. So okay. I'm going to roll the hit. Roll with one. I rolled a nine. You should you should put your tray in front of you because you're you're out of pain. There you go. I rolled. So nine plus a ten. No, I rolled a six. A six. I Misses. rolled a six. Roll the hit again. And I rolled a five. Misses. Nice. So once again, but it, she's defeated by the armor. No, no, I get one more roll. Go ahead. <laughs> You're at a minus ten right now. Thirteen minus ten, so a three. three misses. <laughs> Dang. All right, and it becomes Raven's turn. I... And you have joined uh, the other guys on the top at the shipwreck door. Okay, so I can see there's a big mass of... There's uh, this big mass of pink... Crab meat. Okay. Crabby Ooh, flesh. We're going to need a huge butter candle by the end of this. Well, you. let's try that, actually. I'm going to uh, cast a spell. I'm going to cast uh, a cantrip. And I'm going to cast Produce Flame. Produce Flame. All right. Okay, because I don't know if it's going to work underwater. <laughs> I'm going to try it anyway. What the heck? Maybe it's a magnesium so, flare. It's a, a roll to hit. It might. Yeah, it could be. I'm uh, doing some intel at the moment. I rolled a 16 plus um, my uh, plus six. So the flame is produced. What are what are the damages of it when it when it uh, appears? Uh, it's, it's no, known to, um, to cook crab really well. It's a crab <laughs> cooking spell. I use it all the time in the bayou. A small flame, a ball of flame appears in your hand and lashes out with either melee or a melee or range against your armor class of your opponent. This is normally a range attack. On a success, it's 1d4 plus your spell casting modifier. If it's heightened, which it is, it's a uh, 2d4 and persistent damage on a critical hit. Okay, I'm going to say because you're underwater, it's reduced to whatever to 25% of whatever its regular power is. Okay. So it'd be 2d4 at uh, 25% of that plus whatever. So okay, so I'll roll. So I rolled 5 plus my spell casting ability is 9, so 25% of that is Basically, we'll two we'll points. Always, okay. so it'll be two points. Just two points. Okay. Uh, it would so. be three if you rounded it up. No. Nine? 25% of nine? 2. So 5. we're saying 25% of 10. Yeah. If, if it was 10, it would be 2.5. And even if you're rounding up, if it's nine, it would be 2.3 or 2.2. So, but you, you know, at the midpoint, it's 2.5 goes up, 2. Point, anything below 2.5 right. goes down. But make note. Flame doesn't work with beans underwater. No. I can't use any of my boomsticks underwater, so. Why? This is a big, unique problem for you guys right now. Yes. Yeah. But my eel can still do its thing. Oh, and yeah. it's time for your eel, right? 
Well, I think then the electric stuff isn't working, so he's going to just try a um, attack. Okay. And he's going to try a, uh, a tail attack, which is, uh, no, he'll try a jaws to give it a chomp. So it's uh, plus six to hit. And 16. Hits. Hits. Okay, so it's a 1d6 plus three piercing. He rolled a three plus three is six points. Who's Larry? Who do you think Larry is? The cat. Oh, it's the cat. cat. Oh, sorry. I thought there was cat. something else. <laughs> like, is that a reference to a film or something? Good job. <laughs> You're saying hi to the cat. Okay. Okay. Um. All right. It was that the only attack he's got, or that was that, both of his attacks? That together? was. Yeah. Well, he he can do a second attack, but I don't think he's going to because it's not going to matter. Okay. Good enough. Uh, it then becomes Percy's turn, then the crab, then Lavinia. Well, I got the sword in my hand, so let's use it. Now, if you use the bastard sword and you use two hands instead of one, mm -hmm. you get an extra, you get one higher level dice to roll for the damage if you get, end up hitting it. Okay. Which would make it a D8 instead of a D6. But you missed. I missed. What did you roll? A one. Okay. <gasps> so that means that I get to roll. <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> did you get me with that? I'm not trying. Well, you're lucky. Nothing happens. You don't end up hurting yourself or your companions either. Any higher than you would have. Oh, 27. Hits. Okay. And you said it's a little more you damage. Can, so. If you use both hands, you can roll a D8. Yeah. And, uh, but that bastard sword is from this world. Mm -hmm. So it's got a gold blade, which means there's no fire on it. Okay. So uh, eight points. Wow. All right. You did eight points of damage. Nice. We have one more turn. So let's give it a go. Okay. Third time was only a five. <laughs> so that didn't do it. Okay. Um, at this point, uh, Nereo has been battling this crab and uh, uh, that fight has been going back and forth. Uh, Nereo is basically impervious to the crab's uh, attacks and the crab is so big that uh, it does take a little bit of damage from Nereo, but it's more annoyed than anything. Uh, and so at this point, all of a sudden, uh, it uses uh, this breath weapon that it has. It blows out this huge, long stream of water that pushes Nereo and all of the merfolk back. <coughs> and then you see it's you feel it starting to slowly turn itself and it begins lumbering away from the uh entire settlement uh so lavinia you have just gotten to the top of the crab but now the crab is turning and lumbering away from the whole settlement what do you want to do i still want to do bone spray okay all right roll to hit with bone spray what do we got to do for that i don't know if we even have to I think it just automatically hits. Mm. I think she just rolls th Basic three D four. Three D four. You fire a torrent of jagged bone shards. Now the uh, crab would have to. The ancient crab would have to uh, roll a reflex save to avoid that, but that's ridiculous. There's no way it's going to avoid it when you're on top. Uh, in practically inside its shell. Yeah, now. so, so it's, it hits it's a, for sure. It's a fifteen foot cone of All right. bone spray. So, are you heightening it? Is yeah, it going to be I'm a level two sure. spell? Yeah. Give me a level two spell slot, and then roll. Okay. Three d tens. Ooh. Three d tens. It, it's already a level nice. two. Oh, it's already level two. Sorry, yeah. two d tens. Two d tens. Yep, and you get a bleed damage on it too. Well, 
You want my tag? Yeah, no, if if I heighten it, I get an extra D10 on yeah, top Yeah, but of you'd it. need to have uh, level three spells to heighten it with. It's a level two spell, so you can't heighten it because you only have level two tokens. Oh, okay. but th here's your 10. Thank you. You're welcome. I was going to give you one. And here's a tray. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. Seven. Four. 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 Eleven. Eleven. Eleven points of damage. Very good. Plus whatever <coughs> you've added on. I've got bleed. A bleed. Plus one point of bleed. Zero and three. Okay, that was awesome. Yay. Um it now becomes Thaddeus's turn. What does Thaddeus wish to do? Thaddeus is going to continue with his uh rapier. Okay. Uh go ahead. Are you using it? As a bludgeoning weapon or as a stabbing weapon? Oh, I, I'm I'm swinging it like a bat, but it's got the blade. Oh, so, so slash, slicing, slashing, slashing. Oh, okay, slashing. fine, slashing. Yeah. Okay, I thought I was bludgeoning before. No, no. Okay, go ahead and uh, roll the hit. Two. <laughs> <laughs> no. So once again, shoop in the water. It's problem swinging it through the water, which is probably why plunging is what uh, they do with tridents and stuff. Swing it through the water. You don't have any luck. Okay, I'll try that. Try it again. Five. Five, and it doesn't work second time. Uh, three. Sixteen plus four is twenty. But you lose ten. But I lose ten. 10. Mm. Otherwise, it would have worked. Okay, uh, that's the end of your turn, and it becomes Josephine's turn, Raven, you're not. Okay, so I'm underneath this crab, and You are it's... not. It has turned and started to stride away. Okay. It is now 30 feet away. Oh, where you're am I? You're looking at its butt. I'm looking at its butt? Yep. Well, I'm going to take my three turns and swim up to the crew. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, fighting the jet stream, you get yourself up. Uh, your Zephyr is still helping you do this. Mm. And you get uh, into the ship. Cool. Why did I just have the worst and most wicked idea? Which I may share with you guys. If we can speak underwater, I don't know. Can you we? cannot. We cannot. Blah, 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 blah. Dang it. Well, I mean, you Sign can. language. I Chris. guess you, I, I suppose you can because you guys all have little bubbles. Frankly, here. guys, it's so nice we have this time together. In one spot oh. and in one place. Think about it. So Thank perhaps you. we can take this opportunity to get the hell out of this race. Derp, derp, derp. Okay, so um, it is now <laughs> Leaving Raven's you turn. A departed bachelor. Huh. Well, Breaking I'm going to ties. try casting another spell. Okay. I'm going to cast uh, a cantrip, and I'm going to cast Electric Arch. Mm. Electric Arc, and we'll see if that works. It's a basic reflex save. He can't do the reflex save. It's a hits for sure. Yeah. Yay. So it's not a very powerful spell. It's 2d4 two, two um, plus my spell casting modifier, which is 4. But it's better than some of the other stuff I've tried. Okay, so... By the way, a four-sided die is really hard to pick up. They yep. really are. Okay, there's four plus four is eight total. Oh, nice. Total of eight points of damage. Good yep. roll. And that's um, and I just secure myself to make sure I don't get knocked off of this crab as my third move. But my eel will also take a stab at this guy, and that worked last time well with his um, bite. Bite. His bite. So he's going to try that again. Okay. So it's a plus six to hit. He rolls a 14 plus 6 Hits. is 20, and it's a 1d6 plus 3 points of total of 4 points of piercing. Okay. Okay, um, and you've done a bunch of damage to this crap, and it has made no difference that you can tell yet whatsoever. Hmm. 
other than the fact that for some reason in crab the crab uh, finds you an annoyance under its shell but it seems to be leaving because it was pissed off by pissed off at Nareo. Um, and uh, it is continuing to still going to keep heading in the direction it's going. Percy, it's your turn. Okay. Well, I'm going to keep doing what I do best. So there's only the five Looking of us good. going on a crab ride away See? from the mermaids. See what I'm saying? I know. Mm, that is uh, 17. Hits. Okay. And... Uh, I'm using two hands, so eight for two. Oh, you said it was uh, eight plus something. Uh, two hands. It's a D eight, straight yeah. D eight. Straight D eight. Okay, and again, yeah, nineteen hits. Yeah, okay. you're good still. Seven. Okay, so how much total damage did we do? Um, well, first time I did how much? I did. Was it two? It was two. So a plus seven. Uh, nine. Eight, nine, and this is my third strike. Okay. Hopefully it's not. Okay. So nine points of damage. Okay. Uh, and, so, and I, I yell to everybody, why don't we just hang out here? <laughs> so as the crab is starting to move now, it's starting to pick up speed because it's focused on moving. And it's moving quite swiftly through the water. It's also moving down slope oh, into what looks to be, if you look out the cabin and off to the side to where the front of the crab is moving up moving down slope into black water deep dark black we water. should be getting the heck out of dodge so in its one turn it clears <coughs> another hundred feet of water do we want to abandon ship and it becomes lavinia's turn i say to everybody do you think we should maybe get out of here? I concur. Link arms. We Bad all link sure. arms and... I can, I can swim us back to the... Uh... Okay, in that case, you are out of combat because the crowd continues as you end up floating up into the water mm -hmm. and it zooms out below you off into deep, dark water uh, out of sight. And you are now south of the Merfolk City, Bimnes, uh, by about 130 feet. There are Merfolk swimming towards you to try and catch up to you. Foremost of all of them is Kina, who is very concerned. So let's swim toward them so yeah. they know that we're not trying to... Yeah. Run right. away from them. They catch up to you and they greet you as the heroes you are uh, and um, uh, welcome you back and escort you back to the city. Yay. Kena. When you get back to the city, uh, Nereo is there. Uh, everyone returns back to Nereo's throne room. Nereo seats himself back on the throne and you can see that he actually did take a little bit of damage from the crab but uh he is not severely hurt um and uh i want to cast a heal on the rail okay you can do that you can go ahead and heal that's Nereo. a good gesture yeah so nothing fishy about that <laughs> wooble, 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 wooble. <laughs> Ooh. all right okay so you heal the rail and you do see that uh, the the open scar that he's got where he was slapped <coughs> by the crab's uh, sh sharp edges of the crab's armor does start to heal over. What is uh, his reaction to that? Uh, he He's surprised by it and he thanks you. All right. Uh, the, uh, his his uh, daughters are now ministering to him with their own uh, 
healing abilities as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Nereo calls all of you to him now and uh, congratulates you on uh, what you've done and um, tells you that he has made a decision. And that decision is that uh, he is going to um, uh, offer you uh, two things. One is an alliance in case you ever need any help uh, when you are anywhere near in his realm or anywhere near it. Uh, the other one, other thing that he, he offers you is he says that uh, it is important that uh, that you continue on your quest, including taking Thaddeus with you. Oh. But Kena will not go. It is his wish that Kena remain with her people. Yeah. She is not going, he is not going to send Kena with you. He wants Thaddeus's oath that Thaddeus will return within a year's time. <laughs> So he's given Thaddeus a year's parole to go with you. Yeah, heartbreaker. Parole is a really interesting way of terming that. Yeah. It, it is indeed. I, I'm sorry, but if we stay on land, that's it's never going to be an issue ever again. So let's just get, let's just go. <laughs> well, you know go. they can live on land, right? Oh shoot, I yeah, forgot about that. Yeah. Well, Not only might... that, but you don't know what other allies that they have that they could call to honor. Yeah, right. exactly. Maybe, maybe he's got a way into the network portals we don't even know don't we don't know it? anything yeah now yeah. would be a good time can Nereo is at your disposal to ask him stuff can, and Nereo can, has given you Nereo. a generous offer us yes. a generous offer yeah i think offer, that's I think. a pretty yeah, i think we should accept that oh absolutely offer. of course i will i i mean i, I would not want to be back to Do, support my family anyways well take the treasure take the treasure <laughs> oh, you took the woman take the treasure yeah you earned it the dowry you got you got the chest mm. the dowry is sitting right there right beside Nereo. you can freely do what you wish with it it is it is thaddeus's dowry to do with as he right, wishes right yeah there you go all right um yes i will be back within a year does anyone know what the date is right now <laughs> april 24th Whatever year that might be, here. Act yeah. why is that? There's, there's I think a lot of times now. when you're world building, you'll do a whole uh calendar for that world and all of that stuff. I have not done that, okay. so <clears throat> so as far as he is concerned, that means the t passing of 12 moons, okay. 12 moons, 12 Got full it. moons, 12 full moons. Okay, you know, he does, he's not concerned with give or take. Uh, a few days one way or the other, but 13 full moons would mean you're overdue. Yes. I have a question for him. How can we reach out to you if we need your help? If you are in his realm, mm -hmm. uh, he he uh, signals to one of uh, his um, servants. Does he have a shell phone or a snail mail? <laughs> <laughs> His servants brings <laughs> a conch, okay, and it gives the conch to Thaddeus into Thaddeus's charge. It's a, it's a shell phone, and uh, yes, yeah, sound this, is it? sound this conch phone. anywhere in a conch. Is it conch shell or conch? It, it's conch. Conch, conch. Yeah. Sound this conch anywhere in his realm, conch, but and yes. uh, he will hear it and uh, will attempt to come. Okay, thank you. Other questions for Nareo? Uh, do you, Nareo, do you know where the network of portals is? It just came from there. Well, no, but I mean, Network's do you, right. do you have other portals that are nearer? Nareo says that he has, he has little knowledge of any, uh, any of the things that you speak of that would be on land. No such thing exists in the sea that he is aware of. Okay. So the, there are to the there are jet streams in the sea that they use to travel very fast if they can if they if they wish to go to another part to one of the other oceans or one of the other seas like surfing turtles do is is there a, a jet stream that would take us to the elf world 
He says you wish to you wish to return to see the Fay. The Fay, yes. He says the closest that he can get you to the Fay it would be the north coast of the Gulf, but that is a problem. Uh, do you have a map? We have a map. Yes. All right. So you bring out your map and you show him the map that you have. Um, do we have map of Logan Age on there? No. No. Okay. Daddy says that partial map, the fragment. Unless you could bring it up on the. Uh, the, the map of Wildermage is, is the one that we have because that's the one that we found in the we cavern. That one. Oh, yep, Dungeon one. Master, can you put the map on our... Yeah, this, I'm going to do that right now. There we go. So, uh, Nereo looks at your map and then he brings out a map of his own Ooh. and he compares them and you can see that they're both essentially the same map his is only part of the of of the continent he says because of course they don't they don't keep many land maps there's there's no point mm -hmm. uh one of the things that he points out to you though he says your map is is much older this this is clearly a more recent map that uh he that they found in one of the shipwrecks and one of the things that he points out in comparing your map to that map is that on your map the area in red known as the coast of slaughter is a small area like this whereas the map that he has shows a much larger area that Yago's forces now control all the way from this side of the coast, all the way down the Florida Peninsula, almost to the very tip. So there is no access to you unless you wish to fight your way through going anywhere. He also shows you where you are on your map. And I'm going to find your map just let me bring it up and i'm going to put it up on the same screen uh could we actually get the map so we can see from the camera yes yeah. good okay here it is and so uh hey there we go as he shows you where you are on your own map now. Uh, oh, okay, here we go. Ah, oh, there we are, Merfolk. He points to an area right here. Hmm. Okay, so we just have to go north. And he says that you were found hmm. right here ah. on the west coast of this island. Mm -hmm. Oh. This is where the coal, Lumina Cove is. Nice. Is this spot right here. Hmm. Okay. Oh, here's, here's another one of these. I've got one. I, I also have a curious question for him. Um... Would it be possible for your people to repair a ship such as the one we found in the harbor? Uh, he looks at you trying to understand and then he, he nods and says, no, our people have no woodcraft. Okay, so they couldn't We have no that. need for such a thing. Because that sunken seas. ship looked very promising. Because how do you... Raise it? Dislodge, like, yeah, like get and all the water out of... Well, you replace it with air. That's how they do it in... National Geographic. Oh, okay. They have huge balloons and they fill them with air and the whole thing floats yes. to the surface. Do we have huge yeah, we, we do not we, have We huge made balloons. a balloon at one point. He says if, if, we have a bag of if you needed something <laughs> like that moved, he would harness whales to do it. Okay. 
So uh, why don't can we, we borrow a whale? Well, why why are we doing that? Why don't we just go back just to go the back place, place that we came, we came from? Go yeah. back to the place we came from. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then we just have to figure out a closer portal. Sure. I guess it, it, maybe. Hey, there's an idea. We should ask him if he recognizes any of the names of the places that we found in the portal chamber. <laughs> I am sure they are older names. Okay. So run them by uh, Nereo. Run them by Nereo. Mistvale Marsh. Mistvale Marsh. Uh, you should know which one that is. We do. That's the one we came from. Yep. Right. Yeah. That was the one yeah. that was in the in the Everglades of ice cream. <laughs> I, ice Karen. Okay. Ice Karen. We we went we through were that. There yeah. Briefly. Um, uh, he does not know that one. Frost Reach. Uh, he does that. not know that one. He sounds like it says it it's sounds cold. like it's something in the far north. Yeah. Harrow Fjord. Harrow Fjord. He believes Harrow Fjord is along the coast. I will uh, hold on here. Let me. Uh, <laughs> he believes that Har- Harrow Fjord. How do I do this? Here we go. I'm going to move this down. Harrow Fjord is <laughs> on. <laughs> it's so hard for me to. Oh, I can't. Can I move it this way? I, I can't move it this way. Harrow Fjord is. Step. Along here somewhere. He believes that it is along here somewhere. Okay. Okay. And the, um, the Fae would be back that making way. Sure does, okay, yes, your cursor does show up on the camera. I'm just making sure. Faye is, yeah, Faye is there. there. Right, so. so. The Bay of Fun Day. Sunfire Oasis. Sunfire Oasis, he's never mm. heard of before. Celestia's Veil. Celestia's Veil, he says that may be, it's a possibility that that is somewhere near the Fae Wood. Oh, Okay promise um and this time if we go through we come back <laughs> if it's not the right place uh verdantus verdantus he says is directly north of Feywood, just on the northern border of it okay <clears throat> uh iron root citadel iron root citadel he has heard of the Iron Root Dwarves, so he assumes that it must be, and they are mountain dwarves, so it must be somewhere in the mountains. The Aesir Mountains? He thinks that it may be somewhere near the west coast okay. in the mountains. Silver Shale. Silver Shale, he's never heard of before. Thunder Plains. Thunder Plains. Some place in the interior lands that he has no idea of. Sable Serpent Lake. Sable Serpent Lake is in Unkta territory. Hmm. Sable serpents are pets of the Unkta. Ah, of course, that Very makes sense. Good. Shadow Gorge. And that, that place, by the way, you have on the map, it shows you the Unkta territories here where the Great Lakes are. See, it oh, says okay. Unkta. Unkta. So okay. What was it? Uh, Shadow Gorge. He has never heard of Shadow Gorge. Lumina Cove, we know Whispering Pass. I've never heard of Whispering Pass either. Another landsman place that he's never. Viridian Cape. Viridian Cape, he believes, is on the west coast someplace. Okay. So we don't want that. On the shore, the west coast shore. So I'm thinking the most promising okay, one is that uh, one that's straight north. Was it Verdantis? Verdantis or Celestia's Veil? Vale. Celestia's Veil. Vale. So one of those two. All right. Well, first of all, we have to go to, like, we have to get back to the pinnacle. Yeah. Um, so may we borrow a whale? An Uber. A, 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 yeah. <laughs> An Uber. An Uber. Whale. An Uber. <laughs> nice. That was pretty good. <laughs> I don't think I can mute Kate. I don't think I can mute that guy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> buttons on here that let me do oh, that. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? That's one of my favorite things from the uh, one of the videos that we've got up on YouTube is when I said whaley noises and everybody here went, oh, <laughs> that was great. Fabulous, okay. Fabulous. Um, 
Yes, he says that he will he will dispatch you back to Luminicole okay. on uh Phyrus, yep. uh his nice. his way up. And um if you wish to do that, uh you should make uh any preparations you want to do before leaving and then kiss your bride goodbye. I will do that and find out if there's any way that we could send messages between each other. Well that Aww. Mm-hmm. Well, there's Such a conch, but that will summon her father. Oh, yeah, you don't want her just father. If there's if oh. there's any way of, of you just um, if you just want a booty call, you gotta or a taily call. <laughs> I sure hope that. What are you ruining? Uh, uh, even go with I really that. hope kind of, right? the look on his face went on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> the, it's it, the um, best. The, right there is you can see what we're using recording. the 360 camera. Right yeah, now, yeah, yeah. So. It's good. Um. Uh, Kina thinks about it for a moment. Uh, she gets a very troubled look on her face, and um, she can't come up with anything that okay. uh, you she that you could use uh, mm. because that type of magic is beyond their ability. Is there uh, at once it's outside their realm? There's yeah. nothing that nothing, well, no way to well, still the conch. There's yeah, the conch, but that water, yeah. Um, in the sea, <clears throat> is yeah. he interested in trading with us? Maybe they've got something useful. Well, they already uh, gave us a trunk full of yeah, treasure. They may have some magical things. items that might work well. Us, I mean, who's earning it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The the it last night, but just in case they have something that they might want to trade that we could find useful. I think uh, Nereo Grace, and he thinks that's an excellent idea. He says they do have a hoard of some treasures they found from shipwrecks. And there may be, most of that is not of use, any use to them, but there may be something there that is use to you. And um, yeah. <laughs> Raven does this. Raven's like, money, money, money. That's wizards always need money. We're like so poor because we have to buy everything. That's how it is. So uh, he uh, commits to showing you uh, the treasure hoard that they have to see if there are some things there. Maybe there's the, you know, arms or other things. Uh, and uh, he's going to do that with you next week. Because we are going to have to call it here and shut it down. I know it's a little early. Normally I go up for another full hour. We would do another episode. But... Uh, I'm still under the weather, and uh, so I'm going to have to cut. We're going to have to only, I said only two episodes tonight. This is going to be the end of the second episode. And where we will pick up next week, assuming every, uh, I'm feeling well again and we're good to go. I have this forever cold that's weird. I'm, I'm seeing the doctor on Saturday for it, and I don't know what's going on, but it's it's been a month. Uh, uh, anyways, uh, the plan will be then to pick it up with your preparations for departure and whatever loot there is that uh, Nereo can share with you. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he will return you to Lumina Cove and you can plan to go where you're going to go. Yeah. Okay. Cool. We'll figure that out with the portals. I'm going to find an open area and arrange the stones on the seabed to say this. Okay. Ooh, all right. Okay. All right. Damn fighting words. Okay. Down with the iron. Down with the... Okay. Yeah. Nice. I will keep that here so that we can nice. get that worked out. I'm going to leave messages everywhere. Where we go. go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> terrific. Terrific. Well, thank you, Dave. Thank you. Yeah. Yay. Thank you. Oh, so good under job the weather. Thanks. That's very so, good. We don't know yeah. where to go. Fabulous game. Oh, uh, good. Good. Thank, right, thanks for everyone. thanks for everyone who came you are, and watched. Now, yeah, thank appreciate you. God, we will try and be back next week, uh, uh, illness permitting. Okay, and we will see you soon. I'm going to switch us off to thanks for watching. Hello. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye.